a little more than three years after the creation of Tennis for Two by this man, William Higginbotham, there was a group of MIT students that invented a brand new game. This game consists of two players that involve strategies and using different game mechanics in order to win. This is, in my opinion, one of the most important games in video game history. The game was Space War. In the fall of 1961, Digital Equipment Corporation donated a state-of-the-art computer called the Programmable Data Processor, the PDP-1 for short, to the Tech School of MIT. The previous supercomputer the school had was the TX-0. The TX-0 stands for Transistorized Experimental Computer Zero. There was excitement when the PDP-1 arrived at the school. It was smaller, faster, and easier to use than the TX-0. Even before the PDP-1 arrived at the school, the Tech Model Railroad Club, TMRC, put in a request several years in advance at their school campus in need of a more tech supplies to add to their huge model railroad. When the PDP-1 arrived at the university, it came with no software, almost everything had to be programmed from scratch to get anything to work. But that wasn't a problem for the MIT students since they spent a lot of time programming the TX-0. The professors gave the students a lot of time to start hacking. Hacking involved programs with no constructive purpose at all. During the 1960s, hackers were extremely skilled individuals that spent many hours programming and cracking the code. The MIT students had plenty of hack time and resources to start programming on the PDP-1. So what exactly did they do with all that free time? They wanted to invent a game. A little background on the students at MIT that were hacking the PDP-1 is that they were mostly science fiction buffs. A lot of them watched movies and read books that were all about sci-fi. So it didn't take too long on what the students wanted to create. They wanted to create a game that would push the computer's processing power to its max limit. This game was Space War. One of the TMRC members, Steve Slug Russell, wrote out the first version of the game. It took about half a year and 200 plus hours in computer time to make it happen. The game consists of two players. Each player has command of a spaceship. One spaceship looks like a wedge shape and the other one looks long and thin. The two spaceships had to fly around the screen shooting small torpedoes at each other. Whichever ship is destroyed first wins the game. The PDP-1 console had four toggle switches that controlled the ship. One toggle switch made the ship rotate clockwise, the second made it rotate counterclockwise, a third switch provided thrust, and the last one fired the torpedoes. If you ever played the game Asteroids, the controls and game mechanics were pretty much the same. The game had to be played with two human players because there wasn't enough computing power to program an AI to verse a human player. As soon as the creator of Space War, Steve Russell, finished programming and got the game up and running, the other TMRC students pitched in and helped made some important improvements. Pete Sampson added in stars in the background of the game. He was able to program an accurate map of the night sky, including the relative brightness of each star. Another TMRC member named Dan Edwards inserted a sun in the center of the screen. The sun had an accurate gravitational field, so when a ship flies too close to the sun, they will get pulled in and their ship will explode. This added an element of strategy to the game, thus making players trying to figure out how exactly to use the gravity of the sun to their advantage. Greats, another programmer, added a feature to the game called hyperspace. If a player got into a pickle and their ship is about to get destroyed, they could flip the hyperspace toggle thus causing the ship to disappear for a few seconds, then reappear somewhere else on the screen, hopefully not too close to the sun. But the player can only use hyperspace a few times. If they use it too many times, their own ship will get destroyed. As you probably know, the game was a huge success. Game addicts were playing the game for hours without taking breaks. The game was so popular that the computer wasn't ready for people playing non-stop hours throughout the day. A lot of students kept flipping the toggle switches on the $120,000 computer. The computer wasn't built to handle this kind of stress. So what was the solution? Well, the TMRC members found a bunch of wires, switches, and other additional parts from the model railroad and made another innovation.
This was the granddaddy of gaming innovations. The beautiful gaming controller. Now the gamers could stand back and not be in front of the computer while playing Space War. So why exactly is Space War the most important video game in video game history? Well, a lot of things for starter. Steve Russell and his developers of Space War never had a patent for their invention and they never made any money. Sound familiar? This was the same thing that happened to William Higginbotham when he created Tennis for Two, the world's first video game. Digital equipment ended giving Space War away as a diagnostic program and it became popular with computer programmers and engineers all over the country, including University of Utah, a student named Nolan Bushnell. Bushnell would later create the Atari. So how exactly did Space War make any money? It's simple. You just wait for the price of the computer technology to go down. Space War did finally became into an arcade machine. Was the name changed to Space Wars in 1977. It was a big success since it came out the year as the release of Star Wars A New Hope came into theaters that following year. Space Wars became the most popular game in 1977 until a new game came along in 1978. That game was Space Invaders. Space War was the most important video game ever because it created the space game genre boom in the 1970s and 80s. Space War was the first game to have individual controllers and the game involved strategy that made it fun and competitive for other people to play. Not only Steve Russell didn't make a cent off his game, he didn't even graduate college. He got offered a job in Seattle. He worked at a computer timeshare company. One of his responsibilities was hiring local high school students to come into his office and see if they could get the computers to crash. A lot of kids tried and they ended up failing. But according to Russell, there was one nerdy kid that had enough computer knowledge and experience to make the computers crash every time. No matter how hard Russell and his colleagues try to throw him off, he still manages to crash the computers. And the kid's name was Bill Gates. Thank you for watching.